Alright, so now that we have our controller mapped in, uh, I'm in a new file and I've created a uh, pawn called VR Teleport. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to do a very simple teleportation mechanism using the HTC Vive controller in Unreal Engine. Um, so here I'll go into my pawn, and you can see from the last tutorial I've set up a camera with two motion controllers that are set to left and right. Under them we have two static meshes, which are the controllers. Um, if you're not familiar with this, go back and check the previous tutorial. But now we want to create the teleportation um, uh, mechanism. And to do that, we're going to create a new function, uh, and that's over here. So I'm going to add a function, and this is going to be called trace get teleport location. And with trace get teleport location, we need two inputs in this function, uh, both of which are going to be vector. I'll create a new one. That's a vector. There we go. Um, the first one is going to be our position, and the second one is going to be our forward vector. So what we're doing um, is we're taking, essentially, we'll take the position of the motion controller um, and we'll take its forward direction. Um, and we're going to use that to intersect a piece of geometry. Uh, and the way we solve that intersection is by using the line trace by channel. Line trace by channel here. So what this does is it will shoot a beam from this current location out to uh, a given piece of geometry. And then we can use that intersection point to become our teleportation area. So I'll connect this up, I'll connect position to the start. So the start of our trace is the position of our handheld motion controller. Uh, and our forward vector, I'm going to pull this out, and we're going to multiply this vector um, so that it, it's much, much longer. So we'll just do a float multiply, and we say 10,000 units. Now we need to add that vector to the current vector. So here I'll pull the vector out again and say plus, and we're going to add a vector to a vector. There's our second vector. And so now this new end location is the end of our line trace. All right, that's all we need for now. Um, once this hits something, it'll give us a hit here. So I can pull this out and I can break this hit. And what that does is it gives us a, a litany of variables that we can use to explore the location of which we've intersected a new piece of geometry. Uh, and for our purposes, we're going to be looking at the normal location to see that the thing we're teleporting to is up. So to do that, I'll just pull out here and I'll say, um, uh, again, a dot product. So we're going to multiply. Uh, previously, we multiplied with a float. This time, we're going to multiply with a dot product. Uh, and we'll just multiply this vector times a z vector of 1. Um, and then we will take this and we will check to see if it's greater than uh, a given integer. So if 1 is up, uh, I'm going to say that anything greater than 0.75 is something we can teleport to. Controlling this will let us teleport to steeper or shallower slopes. So if this is true, we want to set um, a variable uh, that is our yes or no, can we teleport. So under variables, I'm going to create a variable and call this one can teleport. This is a Boolean variable, which just means it's going to be kind of a true or false statement. So I'll drag this one out and say that we're going to set that based off of this uh, situation. So if our normal of our intersection is greater than a vector of 0.75, we can teleport. And what are we going to do? We're going to use um, this trace location to drive our can teleport. and. If this teleport is true, we do that, we're going to create a branch. Um, and that branching this gives us the ability to say, well, if this is true, do this. If it's false, do this. So if it's true, we're going to set a new variable, which is our teleport location. Um, so this will be a new variable called teleport location. And this is going to be a vector. I'm going to have to make sure I name that correctly. So let's try that one more time teleport location. There we go. So if our statement here is true, uh, I'm going to set this variable. Um, and our true statement is what allows this to move forward. And the position of which we're teleporting is the position of which this intersection happens. So we'll pull that location here. Um, and now to see where that is, we're going to do a what's called a, a draw debug. So off of this, uh, we'll say draw 
debug, and I'm going to use a cylinder. So this is going to show that uh, when I'm pointing my motion controller at something at that intersection point, I'm going to draw a cylinder so I can see that that's a place I can teleport to. Um, right now it's starting at that location of which we teleport to, the intersection point, and I'm going to draw the height of it based off the normal. So once again I'll pull the normal um, and I'll say I'm going to multiply it by a float. This time it's going to be say 20 units tall. Um, off of here I'm going to add the vector of this new height. So this is taking uh, the location of our teleport, we're adding a 20 unit tall normal to it, and that's going to be the end of our debug. Uh, I'll set my radius to say 50 and set my line segments to say 25 just so it's a, a nice smooth cylinder. Um, and I'm going to set my color to be kind of a bright orange, something that I know I think I can see in the game. I will save and compile this. And now we have to move on to actually calling this function and, and making the teleport happen. So this script right now is essentially over and over again creating a teleport location. And we're able to visualize that. Um, but I'm going to create a new function. Uh, and call that one teleport to location. And now with teleport to location, I only need one input, and that is going to be our location. So we set a new input, I'm going to take our location, um, and our location is going to ultimately go to set actor location. That's it's going to be me in the game, set the actor location. Um, and this function will drive our set actor location, but we have to tell it where we're going to go to. So I'm going to take uh, my right motion controller and drag that into the scene, and I'm going to get its relative location. So off of this, I'll drag and say relative, um, get relative location, and I will break, uh, or sorry, split the structure pin. And what that does is it gets my motion controller x, y, and z. Um, we're going to add our teleport location. Um, we will add the vector here. We're adding our relative, uh, sorry, we have to split this pin to split that. So we're going to add our x to our x, our y to our y. The z doesn't matter because the z is not determining our teleport location. That's going to be always our head height. Um, so our new actor location is going to be this. It's going to be um, our teleport location that's based off where we're teleporting from. Um, and then lastly, we need to actually make these two things uh, trigger. So under the event graph, um, all we have to do is to go in and say, well, every tick, I want to run the trace get teleport function. Um, I'm going to pull my motion controller right again. And off of this, I'm going to get its world location uh, and get its f uh, forward vector. Uh, so I'm getting the forward lo uh, vector and location of my controller. So from that, we're going to say that the position is its location and its forward vector is here. Um, so those are going to be the inputs that go into our trace get teleport. Remember, we made this. And having every tick, it's going to take from our motion controller. It's going to get those two components and push them into this, uh, this script. This script then uses them to compute where we can teleport to. Jump back to my event graph. And then we have to actually say, okay, yeah, teleport. So I'm going to pull my motion controller uh, trigger. And that is uh, the motion controller right trigger. So I had to type motion controller. I have to spell things, everything correctly. Right trigger. Motion controller right trigger. Uh, and when that is pressed, uh, I'm going to do a branch off of that. So branch. Uh, this is another true or false statement, and I'm going to say, okay, well, if we can teleport, and here we're just going to get that, we're going to get that variable that we're setting in another function, so if we can teleport, uh, true is then we are going to teleport. So off of this, we'll say teleport to location, we'll call that other function, and our new parameter on this, ah, you know what, this, this should actually say that's the location, that's exactly what we want. So here on your event graph, this parameter should be location. That's our teleport location, and we're going to get it and plug it into this new parameter. This new parameter needs to read location, and it is not. So to fix that, I just came back here, and on 
the set actor location, actually sorry, here on this function I deleted that variable, created a new one, called that location, set my vector, this is the one I messed up in the first time, this location plugs in here, then under event graph all of a sudden our function calls right, so we'll pull to that location. Um, and that should do it, so let's save and compile and we will go in, we will put our pawn in the scene. Um, it's important to say that when we auto-possess a player, we're going to possess player one, so that way we know we're going to this. Um, I'm going to go into a VR preview. And just like that, we have a way to teleport around in Unreal Engine.